we got the WGA deal is now done. IATSE got their deal done uh, a little over a year ago, but or actually almost two years ago now. But the question is, could these deals, one of the unfortunate side effects of these deals, and we're all thrilled that the deals are getting done, but could one of the unfortunate side effects be that television shows are doomed to have fewer and fewer seasons? We did a story recently that... You know, the original showrunner of the Netflix Daredevil series came out and basically said, yeah, you know, the whole reason that Disney isn't just doing Daredevil season four and instead is creating a new show is because in union contracts, specifically IATSE, once a show gets into a fourth season, everybody's all the crew members, everybody's pay goes yep. way up. And we've seen that things like Netflix and stuff like that, they kill shows after two seasons, sometimes three seasons at most is what they'll give some shows. So could these deals and one of the repercussions be that we are doomed to have shorter and shorter seasons moving on? And that is the topic of today's Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Listen, guys, if you got a question or a comment for the show and you'd love to hear your voice on our show, go ahead and call our hotline anytime 24-7 at 951-268-4259. And our Mint Mobile hotline question today is exactly about that. Are these union deals going to shorten seasons? Check it out. Hey, Johnny Crew, Zach, the bartender from Ohio, calling about the IATSE contracts that mandate pay raises after season four. I was wondering, actually, in relation to Netflix, Netflix is renowned for only going up to about three seasons at most of the average show, no matter how popular it is. So I am wondering if this is part of the reason, perhaps, that we only get to season two or three of a lot of Netflix content. Anyways, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for taking my question and don't have a good day. Have a great one. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for calling that in. And listen, the, the topic of Netflix's infamously short runs on their shows there are very, very few exceptions. Stranger Things being one of them. Uh, did it just have season five or is it about to have season it's five? It's going to have season it's five. It's going to have season five, right? Which for a Netflix series is like freaking supernatural having 15 seasons on regular cable television. I mean, that, that's huge. The vast, 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 vast majority of shows on Netflix don't last more than two or three seasons. And then they kill them. One of the reasons we've discussed about that in the past is because Number one, Netflix doesn't care if people watch shows. Netflix cares if shows get people to sign up and subscribe to Netflix. And once somebody's signed up and subscribed to Netflix, doing season five or six isn't getting more people signing up. So it doesn't matter how many people watch it. So they cancel those shows. And we've seen a lot of high profile ones go. But even back in the cable television days, well, back in the cable television, cable television is still happening. But, you know, there was a, a documentary called Showrunner. And one of the things they talked about is after the third season, power dynamics completely shift. The stars and actors get a lot more power, more money gets rolled up and all that kind of stuff. And that adds to the circumstances that it de-incentivizes like networks to want to have a show run longer, right? It's, it's actually to their benefit to make sure, sh make sure that shows only run one, two or three seasons. You know, because after that, we're not making any more money off of it, but it's costing us a lot more money. And I think for a deal like IATSE, which says like once a show goes into season four, big pay increases have to happen. And I think that's fair. If you're going to stay dedicated and working on a show for that long and a show is that run long running. Yeah, those big pay increases should be in there. And maybe something like that is going to be reflected in the WGA deal as well. But as much as that's a good thing overall. One of the unfortunate side effects is probably, Rob, going to be that, you know, shows that last seven or eight seasons, those are going to go the way of the dodo bird. I mean, those I think those are going to disappear and become extremely, extremely rare. And the new reality is going to be the environment that's been set up now is just incentivizing these streamers again to keep seasons of even great shows very, very short. And maybe one of the good things about that is Ending season short means they're having to work on bringing new great shows to thing. Like I, I can cry and complain and I have cried and complained that winning time got t canceled after two seasons, but we got winning time, right? We had two great seasons right. of winning time and I hate that it ended, but it means they're working on something else to bring. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video. 
Vessi. Now, like me, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Vessi, the shoe that claims to be incredibly comfortable and waterproof on top of that. Well, these claims are really interesting to me because as a Canadian who walked around in a lot of snow and as somebody who likes to go camping and hiking with his wife on the weekends, there's nothing more uncomfortable and horrible than walking around in wet feet. So after receiving my first pair of Vessis and noticing how incredibly good looking the shoes are and how mind boggling comfortable and flexible they are, the first thing I did was I took them into the backyard to put it to the supreme waterproof test and dipped my feet in my pool. Guys, my feet were bone dry and like 20 seconds after having them in the pool and I touched them, the shoes themselves were also bone dry. Guys, seriously, these shoes are stupidly comfortable. They look great and they absolutely lived up to the claim of being waterproof and keeping my feet dry. I absolutely love my Vessi shoes. So guys, if you want shoes that are good looking, are ridiculously comfortable and on top of all that waterproof, you need to head to Vessi.com slash Campia and get yourselves a pair today. Go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get shoes for your best summer yet. So I don't know, Rob, the question being posed here is, could these deals and the environment we have now, are we looking at a future where it's just a foregone conclusion that shows are going to have shorter and shorter runs? What do you think? Yes, 100%. Because, you know, if a show is a hit show on a network, John, that means that the economic model was you can now charge advertisers more money based on the ratings. They're getting more eyeballs. You pay more money for those advertising dollars, which made the shows more profitable. That was the whole point. That economic model and part of the whole idea of residuals in the Writers Guild strike is that streamers, that economic model is not correct for it's streamers. It's not applicable anymore. It's not applicable at all. So uh, uh, Netflix, they basically, when they make a show, if Netflix is a supermarket, the show they make is the can of peas on on a shelf. And and the fact is, going beyond three seasons, I mean, unless it's a monstrously huge worldwide hit like Stranger Things was. Stranger Things, even up to season five, which I was surprised because it gets way more expensive every year. That show's not a cheap show to make. So they figured it was worth enough for them to, to either they retain subscribers or they do get enough more subscribers from the show that people are on the Stranger Things bandwagon. That's the thing I, about Stranger Things. What makes Stranger Things so rare, though, is yeah. the fact that it's one of these extremely rare situations where the show's become a part of the pop cultural zeitgeist. Yeah. It's become a part of the fabric of our pop culture. You would have people and leaving. It's one of those very few shows that I think even in season three and four and five, it's actually attracting new subscribers. Very, very few shows can do that. But I think you're right. Stranger Things is one I, of those I, shows. They, they are. And if you look at things like like the Eric McCormack produced science fiction show Travelers that came out of Canada. By the way, Eric McCormack, star of your movie that you directed. <laughs> Free, free enterprise shout out to eric but his show travelers which i loved uh, netflix picked it up entirely and did a third season designated survivor that was on nbc the key for sutherland move uh, show they did a third season with that i honestly think john that the reason it's not just economics which is plays into it but you have three seasons it's almost like having like a trilogy and and a, uh, you can if you can finish off a network show that might have only had two seasons and make it satisfying people will come back to that show and watch it again because it's a full meal of a story. So I do think that that's also an attractive, uh, it's an attractive model. It's got season one's a beginning, season two's a middle, and season three's an ending. And that's fulfilling for viewers. So a show like Designated Survivor, the, the, P, the, the P's that are on the shelf in the supermarket, can always be taken down, and people will find these shows for years to come and find them to be satisfying. That's why I think that, that that it's not just economic, but it also makes sense from their streaming perspective. It's enough of a bingeable show that it may it has value years beyond uh, when it was made. There's not an intimidating prospect because you know sometimes people tell me about these older shows that I never watched, and I think okay, I should watch that. Nine seasons and 172 episodes, huh? And that can be a little bit daunting. Whereas three seasons of a show on Netflix can be what, eight episodes a season, you know, 24 episodes. It's like, all right, I, I can do that. So maybe it gives them a little bit of longer legs and makes them a little bit more evergreen. Absolutely. Although I do want nine seasons of winning time. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.